All right, I'm Rodney Dawson, Curator of Education at the Greensboro History Museum, and I decided to take a field trip and uh, visit with my man here, Rasheen Pugh, President of the Save the Arts Foundation. Yeah. And uh, now that you're here, we're doing our History Notes podcast. Yeah. And like I said, it's a Greensboro History Museum, yet we're with an artist. You know, right. You, know, you got all types of artists, artistry right. in you, but uh, visual art is what we're talking about. So what am I doing here? And I think it's right. important to explain that and why we thought it important to make a podcast out of this. So, gotcha. uh, Rasheen, can you tell, briefly tell us a little bit about yourself? You can back okay. your songwriting days. Okay. My name is Rasheem Kilo Pugh. I'm a Grammy Award winning songwriter and I'm founder of Save the Arts Foundation, um, Save the Arts Films, and Save the Arts Awards. Save the Arts Awards is the first award show to award painters, sculptors, architects, and photographers. Um, so my nickname is Mr. Save the Arts. Okay. <laughs> right for the song. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it all started for me when uh, somebody advised me to paint a little picture. Okay. And I painted a picture. They thought it was good, and they said, you need to meet this girl named Monique, who had an art gallery in Jersey. Okay. When I met Monique. Which is where you're from. Which I'm from Jersey. Okay, yeah. which part? I'm from Newark, New Jersey. That's where my Brick family City. is. Okay, yeah, yeah. Brick City. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did this piece, and this girl, Monique, had a, a gallery, but it wasn't even open yet. Mm -hmm. So when I met her, she started schooling me on art and how I need to go to this event called October Gallery. That's where I would meet all of these different artists. And after I met these amazing artists, I'm gonna tell right. you honestly, I felt like I really wasn't that talented okay. at that, you know, in the in the main world. Yeah, right. the, I was humble big time. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to still be a part of the art world in a major way. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just be, you know, just an artist trying to compete with the big boys. Right. So when I came up with Save the Arts Awards, that was my way to say, hey. I noticed that nobody never acknowledged these people. Mm -hmm. You have people that have art in their houses, on the walls, on the refrigerators, little magnets. Yeah. But they don't know who the artist is. Exactly. They don't know what they look like. Right. Same they just, they, you house. see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> they bought the stuff from a flea market or the uh -huh. mall or whatever. And I said, you know what? I want to help these artists put a face to their art. Okay. And I want to, and then it was, while we co-owned the gallery, we met artists who would make complaints saying they couldn't get in museums. Or well, they felt like it wasn't enough diversity. They had to compete to get in certain galleries or museums with uh, different artists of different cultures. Okay. They felt like they just couldn't do it. So I wanted to bridge the gap with the okay. award show. I wanted to meet different uh, um, curators from museums and uh, galleries and then introduce, you know, some African-American artists right. to some galleries that really didn't have a diversity like that. And these are all arts museums. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, any matter of fact, you know what's so crazy? Because you mentioned earlier, you, you mentioned DC, the um, mm -hmm. the thing. And I remember before they opened, um, what is her name? She used to be the president of Bennett College. Claire, uh, Doctor Claire. Oh, you uh, know, uh, Janetta Cole. Janetta Cole, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. But my friend Valerie Johnson was, uh, she was the leader of the choir at. Okay. And after we did the award show, we had met these different artists who were, they were known. Like, her name was Annie Lee. Mm -hmm. She was very well known. But she talked to me about getting in that museum. Okay. And, well, she was talking about getting in the Smithsonian at the time. Right. So. But you're talking about the fairly so, new so 2016. Like, so, okay, yeah, yeah, so this is before the African American one okay, was directed. Okay. And it was funny because I was on the phone with Annie Lee and Janetta Cole mm -hmm. and Valerie had hooked up the phone call. And Annie Lee was, you know, she's old school. She was like 80 something at okay. the time. Yeah. So she's telling Janetta Cole, listen, why can't we get in the Smithsonian? Because Janetta was over the African, it was the African, it wasn't African American, it was the African whole portion of the okay. museum. And she of was the saying, Smithsonian. Yeah, of the okay. Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. And Annie was just going on, you know, just like a good grandma would, you know, mm -hmm. grandma go in on you. She was going in like, right. sister, you gotta think about your people and you gotta boom, 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 boom. And Janetta was like, well, there, there's a African museum, African American museum in talks mm -hmm. right now. It's not, it's not done yet, but it's right. in talks right now. And she's like, well, baby, you better make sure I get up in there and all that. <laughs> so then to see it, you know, a few years later come to fruition and to remember being on the phone mm -hmm. with Janetta because she played a big role with bringing Oprah exactly, in. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was like, 
just amazing. I feel but, like that's what I'm gonna call this little part of history. <laughs> but the National um, History and African American History and Culture Museum the, that's there now. That's yeah. It's like a concert ticket. Try amazing. To yeah. You're in that. I'm actually in that with the Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, the album. It's in the music section. Because you started as a songwriter. I, I started as a rapper. As a rapper. As a rapper. Yeah, started as a rapper. And was signed to Quincy Jones in okay. 1993. We was on Quest Warner Brothers, rap okay, group called yeah. OCM. All right. That all was right. our beginning. And all we right. did a Pepsi commercial after that. And then somebody hooked us up with um, Lauren. Mm -hmm. I got a whole story on that one. That's a story uh, in itself. Right. Hooked up with Lauren, and we did the Miseducation. And man, it's been in a. It's in. Which it's won a Grammy, museum. by the way. Yeah. Congratulations. Five Grammys. Yeah, yeah. Five, <laughs> 1989. Five, sorry. 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 <laughs> so, look, and it's in, I'm trying to think of that name. What is it? It's in the Library of Congress. Okay. It's also part of the studies in Harvard now. Okay. I yeah. mean, this is literally, mm -hmm. it has made its mark, man. It's made its mark in the world. Well, you know, hip hop is transcendent. You know, there's, um, I can't remember if it's Stanford University or it's a university in California mm -hmm. that has a course on Tupac. Absolutely. Yeah, Matter of so. fact, they he in Harvard, too. Oh, is he? Okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right, like, that's a second You said hip-hop, but you know, that's what that well, is. You, I, Generation hip-hop. And you, and you, you know see, what I'm saying? I got to that's the hat. Here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and that's, that's what that's all about. Right. The exactly. fact of that generation, how hip-hop has expanded. Okay, and speaking of hip-hop, which, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, uh, it, I don't want to say it allows, but it's a platform where... I used to teach, I used to always tell my students who were primarily minorities, and in some okay. cases I was, at, I was at schools that were predominantly African American, and I would always talk to them about how they, how they should matter, okay. you know, and things beyond sports and entertainment. But hip hop is a platform where, as an African American growing up, you can matter. That's right. You know, because you can see someone successful that had your same hue, mm -hmm. uh, that's successful in, behind the engineering board. That's or right. in front of the camera, or with the microphone in their hand, winning awards. That's right. Um, gaining some fame and having success. So you say, okay, I matter there. So that might be a field that I'll enter into. Absolutely. You know, same thing with athletics. But there's yeah. all kinds of academics that you can matter in as well. That's right. And which brings us as to why History Museum is here at the Save the Arts Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, because of the recent um, uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, that's been elevated recently. I don't want to say Absolutely. it's so recent, uh, but with the events of George Floyd, this whole reckoning—I don't even know the name to call it. Right. And we had a protest movement um, that's still on foot, mm -hmm. but um, it culminated about a month back in downtown Greensboro. Absolutely. And uh, the museum got in contact with a lot of the business owners and the artists, and we collected uh, many of the murals, and we're making a fascinating exhibit out of it that's opening soon. That's amazing. And uh, so a lot of the artwork that you saw downtown, uh, we got some of it, and we're going to have an exhibit, and we're going to open it up online, and you can actually come face-to-face -face once the museum opens back up. That's awesome. Uh, but we wanted to interview the artist. Okay. And so we got about eight of the artists together, plus a business owner, and we met at her beautiful courtyard, and we filmed it. Absolutely. And uh, we said, whom can we get to film it? And I remember a recent contact, not a recent, but a contact I had with you uh, through a young lady I went to high school with. Mm -hmm. And I, ca I called her and she said, well, you need to talk to Rasheen. You remember Rasheen. Right. And I said, <laughs> yeah. And um, so you took on the project and um, you didn't do it pro bono, but you, you, your main concern was finding a way to expose other artists. Absolutely. Which is why you Absolutely. did a great job uh, doing the video. Thank you. That will also be featured in the museum and on our online website at greensboroughhistory.org. And it's also a History Notes podcast. Absolutely. Um, so, but just through that, man, I, I, um, and other folks I've spoken to, got to know a little bit more about, you know, very talented, came from New Jersey, and really came here and made a mark. Didn't just say, okay, I got a Grammy, I'm done. You came down here to right. make a mark. And Whole nother career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Create stuff right. for other people. And right. so as I got to talk to you and and see the people around you and see what you do, uh, I realized that George Floyd didn't spring you mm -hmm. into action. Right. You were into action long before that. Right. You know, so, um, but you didn't paint as you love to do. You didn't create an award of some sort, you know, as you love to do. One of the things uh, outside of helping other artists, you said, I want to create a tape. Right. Which is right. fascinating to me. Right. Who thinks like that? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Who wakes up and sees something with George Floyd? And a lot of the artists I talk to, black, white, Hispanic, 
male, female, all said, this is the first thing I thought to do. How can I give back? How can I give voice to what's happening, this reckoning? This is the first thing I thought to do, and it may be the only thing I know to do. Right. This is where my, my passion lies, and this is where I'm talented. Right. And I'm talking too much, so I'm going to ask. No, you're back. good. But same thing happened to you. When right. I asked you that question, you was like, what can I do? But you said a table. A table. And Absolutely. you know, even when you told me, I'm thinking a table. Right. You gonna play spades on the table? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, but there's a fascinating story behind what's sitting in front of us, and, and this is the unfinished. Right. You know, so we get this right. behind the scenes look. But talk, walk us through it. How did well, this happen? a couple of years ago, like experimenting with art, I came across resin. There was an artist who was using resin, which is this clear topping on it. it you pour it and then it dries real hard okay. and and then I went to another friend house and she had this amazing table of resin but it was all broken and she was like I don't know what to do with this table because it got these cracks in it and all that so you know me being an art my artist mind was like I can fix it <laughs> so I tried it and I, I got the little drill and I drilled in it and I poured the resin and I sanded it down and shaped it again and I made this table, and it was literally, well, I remade the table. Because mm -hmm. it was already in existence, but it was breaking apart. Okay. I put it back together, and I was amazed by it. Everybody was amazed by it. And I said, you know what? That's cool. I really want to do some furniture. I'm going to start doing some okay. resin furniture. So Speaking I started of the doing... But that's also in the ancestry. The museum has a feature of a Thomas Day who made a, a beautiful couch. Oh, wow. And, uh, was uh, an exhibit of, we had it in one of our galleries, and so wow. um, you know, you're just bringing on the talent. Right, you're right, 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 right. So I wanted to experiment because I, I do like building things. I think it's important to, uh, as an African American man, mm -hmm. to learn skills of your ancestors. Right. You know, work with your hands, learn how to do stuff like that. Um, so. I did a few pieces of art with resin, like we have some pieces around here with resin on it. And, um, but it, I said, okay, I'm about to do four tables. I bought this big giant piece of wood and I cut it in four parts. I said, I'm gonna do four different tables. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, okay, what should I do? A friend of mine called me and I did this beautiful table. I'm gonna put it in the video, this other table I did. Okay. I'll put it in the video that I did and I put it on social media and everybody went crazy. Right. So that's what made me think of the size. Okay. I said, I'm going to do, because that, that first piece of art was the same exact size, mm -hmm. wood. So I said, okay, I'm going to do something else. And um, then I thought, what about something that's like crazy and mm -hmm. all that? I'm a, I was thinking colors and I was thinking stuff like that. And my wife said to me, mm -hmm. why don't you do Black Lives Matter? Mm. And I said, Black Lives Matter? And she was like, yeah, you, you know, you're doing some amazing tables for Black Lives Matter. And I said, I didn't know how to approach it. Okay. Because at first I thought, what do I just paint Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. on the table? Or what do I, you know, I'm just right. thinking what to do with that. But I remember a piece of art that I did before where I took a, a picture of Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I put it, I like glued it on this thing. But I did all of this paint art around Michael. Okay. So it was a picture of him with all this paint going around him. Right. And it's another artist named Peter Max. He does the same thing. Peter He'll take Max. a photo. Mm -hmm. And he'll and it's like he kind of screen prints the photo to the canvas, okay. and then he paints on the canvas, so the image is still there, but right. all of this paint is around. It. And what is that meant to do? To emphasize uh, the centerpiece, or I don't, I don't really know what that, that was. It's okay. it's kind of like, I guess for some artists who feel like they can't paint images well, mm -hmm. they say, let me just use the image. Okay. But then let me add my artistic flavor to it. You know, it's abstract. It, it's a, you know? it must be a design thing. We have a wonderful design of Robert Harris, who's designing the. Uh, we don't even have a name for it yet, but this this movement okay. exhibit, and it has the murals. Okay. But he wanted he wanted to capture uh, what was going on during twenty twenty COVID nineteen. Yeah. Uh, the movement itself, this artwork. So you see the pieces, and they call it swag. But you'll see a piece above it that might hang from the ceiling, uh -huh. and it's like the shape of a C almost. Okay. And it's called a swag. Uh -huh. And then he may have another piece just hanging straight down, but his vision is, is all these things uh, whirling in the wind, mm. you know, blowing in the wind. All these things are in the, in the atmosphere right there, nice. in, the, in the environment yeah. that you have to deal with. And then there's the artwork. Nice, and, uh, so nice. So when I hear you talk, 
I hear him saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So it's an artist thing. That's right, that's right. (laughs) So I was, um, so when I, we did, um, we have a documentary that we're working on called The Golden Age of African American Art. Okay. Where I'm interviewing all of these big artists that's paved the way for, they, they, I'm going to stay like this. At one point, when you think of Harlem Renaissance, Mm -hmm. all of the artists who made art back then, was held, all of original art was held in museums. Mm. So African Americans, even though we admired those artists, we couldn't own their art, because it was right. it was over there. Right. But then emerged a whole other set of artists mm-hmm. who created the artists and they created the art market. Okay. Like Ernie Barnes was the uh, art on Good Times. Right. And then you had, um, I forgot the sister name, her art was on uh, Cosby Show. Okay. And then they started having these art expos. Mm-hmm. So then now we started getting the art. We meet the artists and we buy the art and we had it in the house. But I learned something from their art, which they said was beauty is in layers. Mm-hmm. So a lot of artists, they, they can tell if you're an amateur artist, if you just paint something and leave it. Right. But if you paint it and then paint something else over it and then cover it with it, you know what I mean? Right. And they have these layers and then the beauty and then they'll call it depth. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, you see the depth in that image right, right there? That's amazing, right? So I started trying to practice that. Okay. So when I got a piece of wood, like a table, the first thing I do is spray paint it. Mm-hmm. I'll take colors, I spray paint, and that's just the background. Now, how old were you at this time? You, oh, when I started doing this? When, when you said, I, I'm going to go for the depth. Oh, shoot, Four. man. That's probably about a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, like, 15 like, years ago. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I tell you, the whole time that I've been uh, rocking Save the Arch, which was 2004, uh-huh. I was actually studying artists. Okay. I was watching them. I was giving them awards. I was hanging with them. I was interviewing them. Mm-hmm. I was admiring their art. I was buying their art, mm-hmm. helping them sell their art. Okay. And then I said, I'm going to do some art myself. So if you're a student watching this that wants to get into art or wants mm-hmm. to dabble in the art, aim for the layers. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And study people's art. All right. Look around. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll learn so much just from, I call it sponging. Mm-hmm. Soak it up, soak it up, right. soak it up like a sponge. Then when you get to your canvas or your wood, you wring it all out, wring mm-hmm. all that creativity all on your art. Okay. So with this, it was like, I'm gonna do the layers. I did the um, spray paint first. Okay. So now I have a crazy board with spray paint everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I say, now let me get the paint. Now I do my little paint design. I do some paint, now, whatever I feel. Right, just do it. Stop. Now I need to put some glitter in. Any place I want glitter, that's why you see glitter in certain places uh-huh. and certain places there is no glitter. Uh, and these colors aren't accidental either. No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> so you see that right. you see that Africa uh-huh. in there. Yeah. And you see the, the gold, you see the, the blood and the land and all mm-hmm. kinds of good stuff. And then um once I do that, I say, all right, now what I want to do with it now. I started Going online and I was typing in different people who had been murdered either by mm-hmm. the police, you know, stuff like that. All Black Lives Matter people, and it was so many. Right. And I went and printed out all these pictures of all these different people. And I came here, started cutting it up, and I started gluing their faces down strategically. Like I mm-hmm. said, I don't put that person's face. Uh, this guy started it, George Floyd right there, and then his guy is recent. And, that guy's, that girl's recent. That, you know, and I started right. doing all this kind of stuff. So you had to learn. Yeah. And do your research. What I actually the internet? read. Oh, yeah, okay. on the internet. I actually read all of the stories of all the females. Mm-hmm. And then I started reading certain males. It was just so many stories. And I was just like, wow. So it's amazing how much goes into it. Uh, that layering process you were talking about earlier. Let me tell you something. I was sitting here one night. And I'm going to tell you, it was almost like, certain faces were talking. Mm. I was just looking at their face. Like if you look at if you look at these faces long enough, mm-hmm. you almost think you see their eyes move. Mm. I mean it's yeah. that serious. Wow. It's, it's serious. And I remember calling a friend saying, Hey, I gotta take a break. She was like, Wow, what's going on? I said, I'm drained. Right, right. It was like draining me and mo- and it was so crazy, I didn't get drained emotionally until somebody else saw it and it hit them. Mm. And it's like they passed me that energy. I was right, like, right. what the heck? Because I was good. At, I was like, boom, boom, boom. Help you realize I, what you were doing. Yeah, and I was like, check this out. And they were just like. But you know, just, as, a, as a teacher, a former teacher, um, 
you know, my mom always taught me to be well-rounded and to learn different things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, my teacher's coming out saying, to be a true artist, you have to study history. That's right. Uh, you can be a political science major, but you can bring that to the campus. Absolutely. You know, you have to be socially aware and conscious. Uh, you have to know math. That's right. You know, so you can't just discount things like, I just want to be an artist. Yeah. Or you yeah. can't say, I'm a political science major. I don't have to be an artist. Right? It might be in you too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but go ahead. I just want to make that point. So I started putting all of these faces around. I had, it was too many faces mm -hmm. once I actually printed everything out that I said, there's so many faces, I didn't want to cover all the art with their faces. And I said, well, let me cut it and see if there's enough to make a border. And this whole border wow. were faces, just going right. all the way around. Wow, the old and it was still left. Right. So I did the border first. Wow. And then I had to make these bars because it was still so many people left. And I didn't want to leave nobody out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me make that bar. Let me put them up over there, put them over there. Put them so over there. The magnitude, I gotta put my glasses on to see. Mm -hmm. But you understood the magnitude of what's going on. Absolutely. And it gave it that much more meaning. Absolutely. Is there any one or two in here that really stood out to you that, that, that when you wanted to go to sleep at night said, no, I need to keep going? It was a little girl. Where is she at? It was a little girl, very young girl. Maybe she's right here on this one. Right here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a close up on a ca on another camera yeah. so y'all can see it. It's a little girl that I kept saying, "What happened?" Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a few of the sisters were looking at me saying, "If I could tell you my story, this sister was a hairstylist, mm -hmm. and she had so many pictures that were just beautiful." And then there was a video of her saying where she wanted to go in the future. Mm. She was like, yeah, I'm doing hair, and I'm doing this, and I'm trying to do that, and do that. And then it was like, wow, you're not here anymore. Right, right. Just that fast. You know, and some of these, some of these people still have active Facebooks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can still go and look at their pictures. So it's not and, just a name. It's not just a number. That's somebody's family that was absolutely. Fed, Somebody's dreams that were absolutely. cut. Absolutely. I watched this one sister right here, mm -hmm. and she, she got famous... She was famous, and this is her picture again over here. She was famous. A lot of y'all might have seen this girl because she was talking about she, how she hated the police. Mm. Like she was in the car, she had a kid in the back seat, and she was just like, if they tell you to get out, you better not get out the car, and blah, 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 blah. And then that's the one where she went in the house and barricaded the house, and they came and they shot. Mm. They shot through the door because she wouldn't open the door. But the sad part about it was you saw, once you studied the person, like watch their videos and you see their pictures and the pain that this sister had, it was like, it was an anger mm -hmm. and it was, it was misplaced. Okay. It was like, you can tell that, cause she was younger. She was only like 20 something. Right, yeah. So you can tell that she knew a bunch of people or a person who something had happened to that person mm -hmm. and they shared the story with her right. and they helped build the hate inside of her for the police. Okay. And she carried it like a trooper. It's like she was loyal to that hate. She was loyal to it because it was like no matter what the cop said, he couldn't calm her down. Mm. And the cop and it didn't even matter if the cop was being nice, she just saw them all as one. Right. You know what I mean? And when I'm putting her picture down and I was like, I could just see her interview. I see her talking. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking and I'm just, it was draining. But I tell you what, my mission was to make something beautiful right. for all the brothers and sisters here. That was the main thing and I wanted it to pop. Okay. I mean, And I'm yeah. just looking, you know, you'll show the close-ups. You have Black Lives Matter and the lettering is made up of names. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you have Emmett Till. Absolutely. I'm going to do Diallo. Many won't I may not remember in New right, York. So right, right. Were you back in Jersey at this time? Yep, I was in Jersey. Right, absolutely. Al, Al Sharpton was the spokesperson for this case. Uh huh. Um, wow. So now somebody created this font, mm -hmm. and what I did was printed it and blew it up. I blew it up big. I don't know if it was on a T-shirt or they was making a flyer, but somebody created the Black Lives Matter with the names in the font. Okay. And I said, you know what? I need this big. I blew it up and then I cut it in the design 
and strategically pace the job. Here. Gotcha. Absolutely. Because I didn't just want to write Black Lives Matter. And I'm just saying this. Yeah. So, but yeah. you have a lot here. Y'all, yeah. you see the coloring. We see. I see the layering now. I right. can use that term. Right. And act like I know something. <laughs> yeah. So, however, um, what what it's not done. Mm -hmm. You know, you have everything here. What else can you put? It's, it's I'm unfinished. Put, I'm, I got to put my legs. I ordered the legs because mm -hmm. I got these rose gold legs. That's actually coming. What you excited on. about? I'm excited about these rose gold legs. Man. Yeah, yeah. Because well, yeah, I I feel like this is royalty. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. And I even have, um, uh, what is it called? Gold, the rose gold, and uh, the gold foil paper. Okay. The 24 karat gold paper. All right. And I'm going to put the 24 karat gold strategically all around the flame just so that it's not black. Because uh -huh. I wanted to make it, I want to make this um, a piece, even though it's touchable, mm -hmm. that people don't want to even touch. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Absence it's, of sacredness. It's, oh, yeah. it's yeah. kind of like a. Let me look at it. I don't want to touch that. It just looks. It's too clean. Mm. It's too sharp. And when I put the gold leaf around, oh man. Okay. Oh man, it's gonna. It's so gonna. It's not this to is, drink on. This is not. Right, right. I mean, if somebody bought the table, they're supposed to use it because it uh -huh. is a table. But every time they sit at this table, they're gonna have a moment. Right. It's a Which reminder. Is, right. Yeah. Is, now, how many hours did it take you to ooh, do what you got so far? I think I did, man, total of probably seven days. Seven days? Yeah. Did you just work straight through for seven days? No, the first three days I did. But then after that, it was like, is it dry? Mm -hmm. Oh, let me sand that out. I got to put another layer. Mm -hmm. Sand that. This is two gallons of resin. Okay. This is two gallons. That's why this is heavy. I got you. This one is one gallon. It's a lot lighter. But so yeah. if we see that if somebody's walking in, they don't get a chance to talk to Russian people mm -hmm. or anyone from, say, the Arts Foundation, and they they see this table, uh, give me a few words that you want them to walk away with. I want the people who look at this table to remember. I think all of this is about remembrance. I think, I remember going to um, the Black Wax Museum years mm -hmm. ago in Baltimore. And they have a section in the bottom where it's like a slave ship. Mm -hmm. But when you walk through, no matter what you're looking at, there's a voice that keeps saying, remember, remember, remember. And I was like, yo, that's kind of spooky. At first you hear, you'd be like, it's kind of spooky. But then it, then it says, if you remember, you carry yourself accordingly. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. If you remember your ancestors, and I'm talking about all of the steps. Mm -hmm. If you go back to Egypt, the kings and queens, if you go back to slavery with the things that happened bad to them and then the, those that overcame, when you think about Harriet Tubman at the end where they start freeing slaves, if you think about the, the very first of every job position that there was a person that had to deal with racism, mm -hmm. the first lawyer, first black lawyer, right. first black nurse, you know, mm -hmm. with every first position, that person had to go through something so that we can now apply and right. get these jobs easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, and sometimes it's not that easy. You know, right. there's still some oppression mm -hmm. and stuff going on even today. But if, as long as you remember all of the people who paved the way before you, it gives you a great balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, I um, had to study a lot of, do a lot of remembering uh, recently. Uh, and um, as you say that, I think of Dr. George Simpkins, who uh, was a, a dentist, uh, but tried to integrate a golf course, Gillespie Park Golf Course, and did so. The case went to the Supreme Court, and he lost five to four. Had wow. to consult with Thurgood Marshall and Bobby Kennedy, uh, but lost the case, but ended up they integrated the golf course, uh, the, all the recreational facilities here in Greensboro. Uh, and then he also um, sued to have black patients admitted to Moses Cone Hospital. Hmm. And because of that, it set precedent for the entire nation. So he and about seven others are responsible for someone like my wife being a midwife employed by Moses Cone, or me being born in a, wow. a hospital. And so I start thinking, we didn't know about him. Right. You know, I had to work at the museum to learn about him. And Judge Elrita Alexander, um, whom I'm learning a lot more about, who was the first black female to graduate from Columbia Law School. That's right. And then came here and became a judge. And then um, 
Justice uh, Chief Justice, well, Justice Henry Fry, mm -hmm. uh, the first and so far the only right. black North Carolina Supreme Court justice. And so uh, when I see this, I'm thinking of them. Right. You know, of the things right. that didn't make the newspaper that they had to go through. And there's so That's many right. others. That's right. Yeah, you know, I'm not naming. Um, but so many we don't know about mm -hmm. uh, that goes into what we see here. That's so right. even though this was born in protest, you just gave me another layer mm -hmm. at which to look at this. So Absolutely. it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's so many, everybody can look at this. White, That's right. Black, Hispanic, young, That's right. old. That's right. Because it's almost like if you go back to, let's say, the Black Panthers area, mm -hmm. they have newspapers, they got the button, mm -hmm. they have a lot of different memorabilia right. for you to remember that moment. Right. This is an a item to make you remember this moment in time that this was happening to our people. Okay. And um, quickly, I know we don't, you're going to do some close ups on that. Right. But this is a beautiful piece. This, uh, this is called, this is from Black Lives Matter is a movement in itself. Mm -hmm. Say Her Name is a different organization. Right. That they, I think they advocate more for women. Okay. Right? So this it says resisting police brutality against black women. Mm -hmm. So that's what this organization is all about. Um, I created this table because women are our like, I had to look at the camera and say women. <laughs> Y'all are our gems. You know what I mean? I mean, when it comes to being black, you got the black man, but then you got the woman. And the woman is something that you're supposed to just like admire to the max. It's like, if I cut my hand, you go, oh man, that's just a little cut. If she cut her hand, you go, hey, 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 let me, let me hold, let me, let me. you're soft and you're more delicate about mm -hmm. taking care of the woman. And a lot of our women are talking about black men not protecting them, mm -hmm. not acknowledging them, not holding them up in high regards. Right. So this table, it had to it had to be something for the women alone. Okay. That's why there's no men on this table. It's, it, is a, it is a celebration of the sisters mm -hmm. that have been through. These brothers been through it, and this table has brothers and sisters. They've been through it. But the sisters had to be acknowledged because these are our delicate flowers. Okay. And that's on the table you see the flowers. You see the flowers. These are our flowers. These are those soft colors that represent them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. This, this is our, our earth. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like that. <laughs> yeah, so this is our earth, you know? So that's them. That's why you have the earthy colors, the glitter. You know, they like everything. They're bling. Mm -hmm. This is our sisters, man. This is our queens, man. So they had to have their own table. It's a beautiful piece. And, have have, and I'm waiting yeah. for the legs on this one, too. All right. <laughs> so, you know, I guess we can put out more information about where we can see this. You know, uh, um, hopefully it's on display at our museum. Absolutely. Um, uh, but if, if not, you know, I want, if they want to go online and see your work, see what right. Save the Arts Foundation is doing, has, do, has done, right. uh, what can, where can we go? You can go to Save the Arts, SaveTheArtsFilms.com. You can go to our new website, GenerationHipHopBrand.com, which is all of this gear that's just representing some beautiful, great blackness. Mm -hmm. And, our, you know, us coming up in the hood and going from the basement to a billion-dollar industry, mm -hmm. we are the Generation Hip Hop. All of the fashion companies that are big today, Gucci, Prada, Fendi, Adidas, Nike, all those different companies would not be what they are if it wasn't for... The generation of hip hop. Right. We created the cool factor. Okay. We we the ones who promoted in our songs. Mm -hmm. We promoted in our videos. You know. So think about it. When when Nike does a commercial, mm -hmm. they have a board meeting. They cut a check. They pay somebody to shoot the commercial, and then they spend a couple million dollars to put it on TV and right. put it all in front of us. Mm -hmm. How many times have you saw a young black man that signed to a record company? Record company cuts a check to shoot a music video for this person's song. Mm -hmm. Spend millions of dollars for the song to be on the radio worldwide and on TV. Right. And he's representing Nike mm -hmm. and Gucci and everybody for free. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Nike ain't cut them no checks. Exactly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I, I learned that lesson early when I worked in radio. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so now mm -hmm. I, the difference with our brand is 10% of whatever we make goes to other nonprofits. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, we're feeding it back to the community. 
It's the community that makes all of this stuff popular. Why not feed back to the community? Well, you know, I appreciate you spending some time inviting yes, me sir. to your studio yes, and uh, you treat me. I feel like I'm at home. Absolutely. And I, I learned the term layer. Layer. <laughs> Beauty is in layers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that goes for women too, right? Yeah. Because exactly. you got some beautiful women on the outside, mm -hmm. but on the inside, it's not right. Right. But when you meet a woman that's beautiful on the inside yeah, and outside, the layers, it's the so layers, so man. It's yeah. like. You can't compete with it. Yeah, you can. You can. That's the Claire that's, Huxtable, that's, that's, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you retain. You remember that. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So, um, but yes, the History Note podcast, uh, we, I developed this for, started it, you know, for my teaching days. I wanted to create something that will help teachers uh, supplement or build a lesson plan around because I used Absolutely. to hate doing those. And so it's for our educational community. And it could be a Sunday school listening to this or right. a civic group. It's just an education period. It doesn't right. have to be housed within a, right. a school or online. Um, so I, th I think this is wonderful content um, for people to find a different way they can retain this and Absolutely. learn. And so I hope you enjoy just going to GreensboroHistory.org and uh, check us out for our next pod, History Notes podcast. But we've been with Rasheen Pugh, yes, sir. Uh, president of the Save the Arts Foundation. Yes, Thank you very much. In uh, the gear. Yes, sir. Uh, cool again. That's and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely cool again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, right. right. thank you for tuning in. Let's look out for our next episode. All right. Peace.